Hey, my name's Jake, and I recently released a film about chasing after getting my bucket shot with the Sony cameras and the Aurora in a glacier. And I'm going to play a short clip of that here, but most of this video is about how I use Film Converts Tool Cinematch in order to match all the different kits, types of cameras that I was shooting with on that project. So enjoy this little clip of the video. If you want to see the whole thing, there'll be a link and you can go see the whole thing. And then I'll show you how I edited through the process and or went through the process of using Cinematch to match all the different types of cameras I shot with for this project. Two big reasons I live in Alaska, glaciers and the Aurora. I've long been fascinated with the immense rivers of ice that flow downhill and offer otherworldly places to explore deep within. And every time I see the Aurora, I'm met with what can only be described as awe and wonder. There's a reason these incredible magical displays of light filling the sky get people to brave brutally cold temperatures and go without sleep. It reawakens the childlike wonder and excitement of experiencing awe. There's a photo that I've wanted to capture for a few years now, something to capture the otherworldly experience that is a glacier ice cave and the wondrous magical sky filled with dancing colors that is the Aurora. I want to photograph the Aurora, but from inside a glacier ice cave. Now this presents a few challenges. Finding an ice I want to say a huge thank you to Film Convert for sponsoring this video. I've been using Cinematch specifically for a six months now and really have enjoyed using it. If you're somebody like me and you shoot on a lot of different cameras, Cinematch might be a really great tool to add to your arsenal. For example, on this project, I use my A7S III as my primary camera. I shot with a GoPro, my iPhone 12 Pro, and the Mavic 3. And getting all of those cameras to match and so that they all look like relatively they were shot on the same type of camera can be a huge challenge, but with Cinematch it makes it pretty easy in a few clicks to be able to match up different cameras and make them look like they were all shot in the same or on the same camera for the most part. But it goes way beyond that. So I want to show you how I use Cinematch in this particular project to make everything work together, how it might help you out in projects you're working on, because it's a really powerful set of tools in a single plugin for programs like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. To start off with, I want to show you how simple Cinematch is to use. Basically, it's a plugin, you bring it in, drag it onto a piece of footage, get rid of that, and then you go up here and open the controls. Uh, bring this over here so I can see it a little better. And then what you have here are your make and model of different cameras. There's a whole lot of options here. Uh, this was a Sony A7S III, and this was shot in sgamut.cine SOG3. So there, now you can uh, either target a different camera, like you want it to match something else, which I'll show you here in a minute, or you can apply a Rec. 709 transform, and that gives you kind of a really basic color correction, transform to get it into the Rec. 709 space. From there, you can adjust the, the exposure if you need to. Um, I didn't really need to. You can check your false colors if you want to for middle gray. And then one of my favorite features here is adjusting the white balance. So I know that this frost up here on the ceiling is exactly white. So I'm gonna use that and set my white balance. And here you can see it made some really, really basic corrections um, just to tweak it a little bit. Now you can, of course, move stuff around if you want to make it a little less green, more magenta, or you can adjust the color quite a bit one way or the other. You want to make everything feel cold, run it to the blue side. If you feel warmer, run it to the red side. Um, I'll just readjust that, use the dropper tool, go up here, find a piece of white, and there we go. You can also check your white balance false colors if you want to see if stuff that's actually white is actually white. This will show you where it's white or not. And then if we come down here, you can act, uh, tweak your uh, settings with hue, saturation, and luma curves. So say the reds don't match exactly, or the blues, or something doesn't match exactly, you can adjust that here by selecting your source red and your target red, and then tweaking and adjusting these settings to get things to match exactly. And then here we have secondary corrections, which is a great way of doing just a little more color correction. So you can adjust your highlights if you want to, you can bring down your shadows a little bit if you want to. Um, you can even, you know, warm up the highlights a bit, maybe cool off the shadows, uh, warm up the midtones, let's say a touch, probably not. <laughs> but anyway, you could do a lot of different things here in these, this uh, secondary corrections here, which is kind of more your color grading. I'm pretty happy with where it is overall. I'll push the highlights up just a touch. 
pull the shadows down just a tiny bit more and eh, maybe pull the, the midtones down just a touch. I'm happy with that. You can play with the saturation. If you want it to be really saturated, you want to go grayscale, you can do that, uh, reset. And then I like to add just a really subtle S curve here, just a tiny, tiny bit. And it just adds a little bit of pop and a little bit of contrast without going too crazy or too far. I think I like it right in there. And here you also have a histogram. So if you're, you know, go crazy, obviously it's gonna show you stuff is really blown out in one place. Here we know, okay, stuff isn't blown out, obviously except for the lights, cause those are really bright. So now I wanna show you how we match drone footage up to the a7S III. The a7S III is my primary camera for this. And so I wanna match everything to that. Right here, we've got an a7S III clip that's already color graded, transformed to the Rec. 709. So that's pretty much ready to go. And then right here, we have a drone clip that was shot basically at the same time. So we're gonna do kind of the same thing as last time. We're gonna drag Cinematch onto there, get rid of that. Open the controls. Um, and then here, we're gonna, uh, do our drone model. They don't have a Mavic 3 model, but I found that the X5S is actually pretty close. That was shot in D-Log. And then we want to match it to the Sony A7S 3 in uh, S Cinetone. So that looks like S Cinetone log footage. We want to apply the Rec. 709 transform. And already we've got a pretty close pretty decent color grade uh, or transformation into Rec. 709 and it's matching pretty close looking at the browns off the bushes and the trees. Um, so what I want to do now is take this white balance tool and I want to hit something on uh, something perfect white. Now depending on where you click because that's in shadow or say we pick these the white that's in the sunlight here it's going to obviously adjust and tweak a little bit differently each of the colors but I'm happy with pretty much any of that. I might pull this back just a hair, like right in there. Pretty happy with that overall. And then again, we've got all the hue, saturation, luma curves, stuff like that. If we felt like something wasn't quite matching up, we could select a target and then uh, adjust and tweak. Like say we wanted to do this, the blue sky, we could pull it up, we could make it purple if we wanted to. We could, we can do hue, hue versus hue, which essentially you change the color you could do hue versus saturation. Let me uh, tweak that. Hue versus saturation. So we want to saturate the sky a little more to make it stand out more, which I did a bit because it, um, you know, it, it just was such a drastic difference coming from all the white cloudy coverage. We do that. And then just like everything else, we can tweak the highlights. Uh, we can tweak the shadows, which I find I do a little bit because this isn't quite exact because it's the Mavic 3. But that's the nice thing about this plugin is you have these options to be able to color grade right through all right through the same plugin. And then I'm going to throw in a little bit of an S curve. That's a little too much in the shadows. So here you look and it looks pretty dang close. Like the, the white looks the same. The, the bushes look about the same. I also shot some clips with the GoPro and I shot some clips with my iPhone. So like this is my iPhone footage here. I open the controls there. And the nice thing is when you have it open, as soon as you select a clip, it automatically switches to that particular uh, clip. So here we have Apple, iPhone 13, uh, 13 Pro, which is what I'm using. And I shot it in ProRes. So that's the Dolby, uh, gives it obviously a little bit more. Now, if we select nothing, um, whoops, I gotta get over here. If we select nothing, obviously it's going to uh, show that there's you know no, no difference there at all. But then again, I wanna match it to Sony. I wanna match to the A7S III. And I shot the A7S III in S dot gamut, or uh, S log three to S, S gamut cine. So there's the, there's without, and then there's with the transform to get it into Rec. 709 space. I did have to raise the exposure a little bit, pull it up. Uh, we can do the temperature as well. Select on some snow. That kind of corrects everything. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of a S curve just to kind of give it a little more contrast. I drop the mid-tones a touch. Pull up the highlights a bit more. Uh, and touch the shadows down just a hair. So there we've got me talking. And if you look at like the greens of the trees and then here, it looks pretty close. So you, obviously you can dial it way in, way more than this. One more feature I love about Cinematch that I've used a lot is once you get a kind of general workflow, 
you get the footage dialed in the way you want it, the way you like it, all of your color grading, everything, and you find that you're using those same settings a lot from say shot to shot to shot on a particular camera, you can go up here in the corner and export a LUT that will be ready to go. And literally you can do exactly what you've been doing in Cinematch, but in two clicks and you're done. Now, if you want to try Cinematch out for yourself, they do offer a free trial that gives you most of the functionality and you get to try things out, which is great. If you use the link in the description, you want to purchase it, you get 10% off, which is awesome. And right now they're offering a sale for 40% off, which also adds to the 10% off, which means you can get up to 50% off. Any of the Film Convert plugins right now makes it a fantastic deal. As for me, I hope you enjoyed this video. I put together a playlist right here of other ways you can improve your videography and photography. So I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights from 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.